Hey guys, could this teardrop tent we are sitting in right now be the best teardrop tent on the market? No. To us, it has every feature needed except one. Stick around to check this one out. Hey guys, we've made it. We survived one winter with darkness and snow in Alaska and we're out again here. As you can hear with the microphone, we are out on the Knick River on sandbars where planes are doing touch and goes. So I think this tent behind us has every feature a teardrop user would need minus one big feature. I'm gonna share with you the nine things that it does meet and obviously the one thing we wish it had. So today we're just gonna get right into this tent. The first thing that we wanted in a teardrop tent was dual entry. We needed two doors, one on the front and one on the rear, so we can use one door as a side entry tent for the scamp or the teardrop, and the other door for getting out into nature. Okay, you want mama to take you on a nature walk? Yeah. Come here, I'll show you some more things out there. This tent also has the ability to give us some privacy. Like I said, we can take down all four walls. And that gives us the ability to change our clothes. You can stand up in this tent. It's, I think, about six foot tall, which is great because that's kind of the issue with a teardrop. Where do you go to the bathroom? Where do you change your clothes? Well, when you can get right into this tent from the teardrop because there's two entries, you can come in here and do all that. And really, it's just an extension of the teardrop. It's your outdoor living space. but you can also have partial privacy with this. So by partial, I mean you can choose which sides you roll up and which sides you put down, which is really nice when you're at a campground and you wanna kinda of get some space between you and the other campers next to you if they're a little more rowdy. If there's sun coming in one direction or wind, you can block that off. Another thing is you can kinda of block all this off if you need some privacy, but then still have a view looking out into nature. Here's a plane just practicing a touch and go out here on the sandbar and he's landed. The other thing we needed was awnings. Well, okay, maybe we didn't need awnings, but every time we see somebody pull in with an ARB awning, we get a bit jealous. We love these little awnings that sit out over your camping area and you just have fresh air around you in nature and it puts a little shade over you. It puts a cover so your shoes don't get rained on. They're just big enough to put one of these camping chairs in under them and just kind of hang out. And so this tent has that ability. We have one, two, three, four sides that have possible awnings. So what it is is the tent has these side walls that come down to protect you, but those side walls can raise up and there's grommets in the corner and those side walls can become awnings. And we're hoping that we're gonna be able to stick some sort of suction cup mount to the top of the teardrop and put an awning between the teardrop and this tent is sort of a breezeway for getting in and out. So I didn't spend a ton of time researching these canopy poles. Most of them that were lightweight cost quite a bit. These were the most affordable we could find from Cabela's, about $10 a pole. They're about seven feet high. They collapse down. They have the end that you need to connect it. So I don't get the physics behind this. Is the line supposed to go out like 90 degrees, 45 degrees? How far is it supposed to go out there? Do you put them close to these poles or do they need to go a long ways out? I think I got a lot of research to do, but if you guys could let me know in the comments, it would really help. Until we can find something better or just decide what type of canopy pole we're gonna use, for now we'll just be using cross country ski poles on these extra canopies. Another thing we were looking for is a tent that has a 360 degree view. Our last tent was a pop-up that worked amazing. The issue we had with it is it had solid walls and we always wanted to see more. We could only look out our front entry and this one, wherever we are looking, we are taking in the views that we came out here to see. 
One thing we also noticed last year is that we struggled to keep out the bugs and see around us. And this tent gives us that ability to look around, but yet there's bug netting all the way around this thing and it's sealed with a zipper from the top to the bottom and to the sides. And in Alaska, not being able to camp in bug areas really determines where you're going to camp. So last year we ended up going down to the Kenai Peninsula a lot because there's not near as many bugs as up north. Now with this, we're gonna be able to go up north and in the evenings have more time camping, cooking, hanging out in here with the family and not worrying about swatting bugs the entire time. So did anybody notice that we've already shot at this location in the winter? If you look, this is the same location we shot the Knick River Cabin Northern Lights video. Our family just loves to go out to same locations at different times of year and just see kind of the differences. So if any of you caught that, pretty cool. Let's get right back into this video about the tent. So size is a big factor to us. Typically, if you look for some of these gazebo style or shade tents they're like a 10 by 10 or a 12 by 12 which is nice and comfortable but takes up a lot of space in the campground this one i believe is about a 6 by 8 and it's just perfect for our needs fits nice and snug next to the teardrop and again doesn't take up too much extra space Also because the size of this tent, we're gonna be able to do everything you would do outside because it fits our grill, it fits our chairs, it fits the heater, fits everything we need. The cost of this tent, it just depends on your budget. I would say it, it's not gonna break the bank for most people at a hundred some dollars. I think it was like 120, 130. But it's also low in comparison to good products and that's what kind of makes us nervous about this tent. It is made in China. It doesn't have like YKK zippers. You can tell the seams are probably poorly sewn. We're gonna have to really take care to be delicate on this tent. It reminds me of kind of those old Coleman tents. Not old. There was a time where Coleman made really great products and then there was a period where they were kind of skipping some steps in the manufacturing process and that's what these remind me. Old fiberglass poles. It doesn't seem very water sealed. The zippers are a little catchy. These are the original stakes that come with the tent. They're pretty poor quality. We already bent a few out when we hit some rocks, so we're gonna have to upgrade. So we upgraded our tent stakes to these Kelty no bendum stakes. I think they're Kelty. They're kind of costly. We'll see if they're actually no bendum. I think they're called no bendium twos. Pretty good name if they actually hold up. We'll be using this every day throughout the summer, so we'll take it with us, and if you follow us along on the journey, we'll share with you how it holds up along the way. Before we share with you the feature we wish this tent had, if you're new to the channel, check out the five best teardrop camper tent video we made. It's mostly focused on awnings, but they're also items we would highly suggest you have for your teardrop. So the thing that we wanted, the tent item that we needed for a tent, which would make this perfect, is this tent is not pop-up. It does not have the ability to go up in less than 30 seconds. The first time we ever set it up, I'd say it took about five minutes, which we thought was good, being the reviews, people said it took them 20, 30 minutes. And we don't quite understand why, because there's only two poles. Uh, and they hook in in four spots, and that's basically it, and some guy lines you put up at the end. But a pop-up would just make this the perfect ideal situation. With the teardrop, you want kind of an instant bedding situation, an instant outdoor living space. And you can get that with like the clam tent or like the gazelle, but they're always missing something. So either they can't stand up in them or it pops up, but all the walls are solid and there's no bugging or it pops up, but there isn't two doors. To get every one of these features and a pop-up, I haven't found a tent yet that meets all those needs. And if you guys have, let us know in the comments below. We will literally go out and buy it tomorrow because that would just fit the bill so perfectly. Well guys, thanks for sticking around. We're gonna keep putting this tent through its paces, but if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe for more of these videos out in Alaska. Thanks everyone, see you in another episode.